All right, welcome everybody to our March 15th Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, we are, uh, I'm going to give everybody a couple seconds to let attendees kind of get in. Um, but we will go ahead and start the meeting while we're waiting on participants to join um, by doing roll call. So I will start with uh, Director Smith. Here. Director Decker. I'm here. Director Scroll. Here. And Director Zavala. Here. <clears throat> and I am also here, Director Barrows. Uh, so we can go ahead and get started. Uh, I am going to turn it over to Dr. Snell uh, to start the meeting. Thank you, Director Barrows. Um, people seeing my screen okay? All right. Oops, I don't want to share, I want to present. So this evening, our committee of the whole meeting, uh, just a brief overview, a quick superintendent report, um, just a little bit of an update on the pandemic, a little legislative update, and then the bulk of our time is um, focused on student learning um, with a deep dive around our social emotional learning. Um, and you've seen some district level overviews and we'll have um, some more of that information, but really pleased to have the iTech um, team here tonight to share with you of what it looks like going from kind of policy district level down to actually impacting students. Um, and then we'll wrap things up with the contract review, looking at the um, agenda for April and um, making sure if you have questions or anything that we can do research prior to those being on the regular board meeting in April. So first of all, with the, um, the, the legislative session ended and we were tracking some areas um, that I was kind of giving you regular updates on and we did uh, receive some um, uh, monies or will receive some monies through enrollment stabilization. And so about 347 million across um, the districts. And um, some of that is from local effort assistance, um, which is a part of the levy um, programming. Um, and so Brett is, once that budget is released, then we, you know, we process through, well, what does that mean for us in Vancouver? So we'll be updating the budget committee and then uh, you all as um, that information is, is known. Another area that we were paying attention to was the staffing allocations in the prototypical school model. And um, uh, with great alignment to our agenda tonight, that's focused on uh, social emotional support, student wellness and health. Um, and so there are some enhancements to the ratios. So just so um, ratios means the number of students generating um, staff members from the uh, funding model at the state level. And so when those in ratios are enhanced, that means that we typically receive more funding for staff in those areas. Sometimes that translates directly into more um, staff members and other times that translates into uh, perhaps we were using local levy to fund those positions already, so it frees up some local funds to do whatever else um, is, is deemed important through our budgeting process. So, um, and then finally, we talked a little bit throughout about a, another transportation model, and so there is a little bit of money in there for that, um, with the hope that they're going to be looking at that with a little more depth uh, in the coming years. And then finally, um, inflationary rebase. Um, this used to be called COLA, kind of cost of living adjustment. Now it's an inf inflationary price index kind of factor. And so what it means is that our allocations uh, that we receive for um, state funding for positions increases um, at this rate. And um, we, we are probably aware, you're aware of the inflation that's happening in in our general economy. And so that's impacting that uh, indicator. And so uh, right now that's at 2%. And then you're seeing that, that for coming years, that's increasing. Um, that's great in terms of um, compensation for employees. That usually goes directly to employees. Um, but the challenge of that is that it only goes for state funded employees. And so anybody that's funded at a local or federal or things like that, then we as a district need to either pay for that out of local funds. Um, and so it can have some impacts. And so just wanna make you aware of those things that happens uh, typically, although not, we haven't seen in, I can't recall a 5.5% rate um, with us. So that's pretty significant. Um, 
on the pandemic front, I guess I should pause and see if there's any questions about that. Sorry. Okay. And um, Kyle and Wendy are representing you well. We had a budget committee meeting on Friday. Um, great questions, um, kind of taking a chunk at a time. And then we'll cycle back through with you all um, in a board meeting uh, April, May, as we lead you to hopeful budget approval uh, for the 22-23 school year. Related to the pandemic, I only have one slide today. Um, as I told you last time, I'm starting to move from this, the image on the right, which has been the Clark County public uh, case rate per 14 day, um, to the image on the left, which is more of a dashboard view of Clark County, which does a seven day rate. Um, and uh, vaccination percentages and hospitalization um, indicators. And so um, that's what we're monitoring. Uh, our cases in the districts have dramatically gone down. So today uh, the case notification came out, it was two cases for the entire school district. So that's a lot different than it was four or five, six weeks ago. So uh, we're grateful for that. And also, you know, just kind of trying to monitor uh, what's happening. Uh, of course, the masks um, became optional this week. Um, it's our staff at the building have done a phenomenal job. I'm sure um, there's been some hiccups along the way when you have this many schools and this many students, but overall um, haven't had any reports of significant concerns or anything that's, that's going awry. Um, kids are, depending on the school, still wearing their masks at a pretty high percentage. Um, and in some schools, um, they're not so it's, it's been interesting to just kind of see how that plays out across our district and the different levels. And it, it kind of feels like that as the week goes on, more students will be more comfortable removing their masks. But I, I guess that's just speculation on my part. So all in all, um, our team is, you know, they do a great job of navigating these transitions for students and families. Um, so we're hopeful this is the last major transition this year um, and uh, gives us a nice couple of weeks before spring break to really kind of work out any kinks and get new flow of what this life looks like. And then hopefully returning from spring break, we can just really kind of end uh, towards graduation and the end of the school year on a high note. So any questions about um, pandemic response? Okay, so then I'm really pleased tonight to introduce a familiar face to you. Um, Darcy's been on um, multiple times talking about um, panorama and social emotional uh, learning and also our curriculum and how we're trying to make that more public facing. And so um, she's got a team of people. The goal of this um, presentation tonight is to build on what was shared earlier in the year with our high level district data around how students were doing with um, SEL and um, really give you the chance to go deeper. Um, so questions are encouraged and also just reflection on um, how do we build on this. So Darcy, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Dr. Snell. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, and in just a minute, I'm gonna have Teresa go in a little bit more detail, but we just wanted to talk a little bit about um, our implementation, some of the things that we have accomplished so far, so far some of the things that we're working on, um, and supports, and then again, give you the opportunity to ask us questions. And if we don't have the answers, we will certainly find them for you. So um, our implementation update, we have had uh, various trainings for Second Step and Character Strong to make sure that um, building staff are prepared for using the second step curriculum K-8 and then character strong 9-12. Um, we've had trainings for Panorama to make sure everybody understands the idea of a universal screener um, and why are we using this and to help them understand the data that uh, Panorama can provide and how to use the platform. Um, a lot of communication around Panorama since this is new for our district. Um, we did a, uh, the fall, implemented the fall panorama survey for grades 312. And we are in the process of continuing to provide um, cell lessons. The teachers, the classroom teachers, uh, K-8 are providing those lessons. Um, we're working with counselors to provide tier two, which is kind of small group and tier three individual student supports based on our data. Um, our teacher librarians are working with us to curate resources to extend 
to extend cell topics and to provide other um, experiences and opportunities for teachers as they work through the curriculum. And uh, Teresa is working directly with Truman Discovery and Skyview to be really involved um, at each of those levels in the process so that we can help to um, refine that and provide supports to um, our other buildings as well. And Teresa, I know you kind of uh, introduced yourself, so I'll let you go ahead and talk a little bit more about the specifics around Second Step and uh, Panorama. Sure. And, and character strong, I mean. Thanks, Darcy. So we continue to identify ways to strengthen our SEL implementation support of Second Step. And to date, this includes providing trainings to staff and then the use of a Second Step virtual library. So the image you see at the bottom there is an actual virtual library where if staff go in, it helps um, with resources such as ways to integrate SEL into academic content areas, family resources, so how to link Second Step from school to home, ways to extend the weekly lessons. So Second Step provides resources called Prep and Extend. If teachers teach the lesson on, say, Monday, then how do they extend the information that was in that lesson for the rest of the week? And then just updates as um, Second Step creates new resources. These are all housed there. Next slide, please. And then with regard to Panorama, our spring window is May 16th through the 27th. We have provided training on the use of the Panorama platform, as well as just how to analyze um, and disaggregate the data within the platform to a variety of different staff groups. And then to streamline accesses to resources within Panorama, I created a hub. So that visual on the right that you see is a hub. So anything that is Panorama specific to VPS that is housed in that document so that as staff are needing resources um, or wanna check something with Panorama, they can just go to that hub and they don't have to search through the entire platform. Kathy, you have a question? Sorry about that. I was just curious, how does that uh, window that May 16th to 27th align with um, the, sorry, the, the testing, the, uh, the state testing. Smarter balance. Yes, thanks. Yeah, so. Because that's around the same time, isn't it? Yeah, the yes. smarter balanced is, is um, a little bit before that. So it's in late April and May. Um, we do have a lot happening at that particular time. Um, the hope is that this would almost be you know, a nice break from that so that it's a little different, um, a, a break from the academic so that students can be um, answering questions about themselves <laughs> um, as opposed to the academic. So hopefully that'll work in okay. But yes, that the, the testing the windows are gonna be all kind of during that time. Um, but the other hope is that this, the timing of the data will help. So we've got the academic data along with our um, cell data. It will help the end of the year um, work and planning. So we'll have the data back to be able to share before the end of the year. Okay, thanks. Okay, and then next slide. Yeah, and our next side, slide just goes over kind of the highlights of our three-year plan. So this being our first year, we're getting kind of a baseline, um, providing those initial professional development opportunities. But of course, we want to start digging deeper now that we know more um, about Second Step, about Character Strong, about Panorama. Um, we want to make sure that schools are dedicating time um, which they are, but in order to be able to really see what's going to be optimal, um, experiencing that this year is going to help us make some decisions about what that's going to look like next year. Um, designated time for collecting and analyzing survey data. Um, so really building that in 
taking a deeper dive with that, um, providing professional learning opportunities, and then um, again, refining what we've done this year and learning from that. And then in 23, 24, um, refining our school-wide. So what we're kind of continue or considering our tiers of support. So what's happening in the classrooms at the building level, um, really looking at then building on that to provide those um, more direct um, services to students um, in tier two, the small groups and um, more specific. And then in 24, 25, just keep refining, reviewing, looking at our data, our usage data, um, really tying into the social emotional learning, the state standards, how we're measuring those, um, taking a, a deeper dive each year as we move through. So at this point, I think that Darby's on to give you some examples of what's actually happening in the building. Thank you very much, uh, Darcy. And thanks for having us this evening. We're really excited to share what, uh, what we're doing um, at iTech. And, and again, this is an example. There's great work going on all over the district, um, but uh, we wanted to share just a little bit about uh, how we were using the data and, and approaching social emotional learning with our students um, tonight. So uh, I'd like to also introduce uh, Anna Ricks and Brian Hugo. Anna Ricks is our uh, equity coach at iTech and Brian Hugo um, is one of our counselors. And they did some amazing work uh, around rolling out this, this, uh, these ideas uh, to our staff and, and really involving everyone in the process of, of planning based on the data that we got. So I wanted to uh, take a second to, to read through this quote. You've probably seen it before, but it's a Maya Angelou quote, um, and it, uh, it will kind of frame what we're going to talk about. So I'll give you a moment to read through that. All right, next slide, please. So um, kind of to give some context, and we'll talk about what we've done with this data, but kind of to give some context uh, as to, to the overall work uh, that, that we're wanting to, to engage in with our, in, in our school community, um, with our school culture, is, is the, the reason that we're, we're doing this and, and you know, any of us are in this business is, is to help our kids. And um, there's a story that came out of our accreditation process, which is a process you do every six years um, with uh, ESD 112. And uh, in going through that process, there's some student groups, some student feedback groups. And uh, in that, there was a, a quote that came out of one of those, um, one of those student feedback groups or focus groups um, where a student uh, referenced, and I don't, I don't remember the entire thing, but essentially that they, they didn't feel like they were, that they belonged at iTech and they didn't feel like they were part of the community. And that, that um, you know, kind of hit home with us because that's one of the things that we really try to try to promote with our culture is, is that idea of being a PBL school, project-based learning school, um, is that, that we're a learning community and that, that everyone uh, is part of that learning community. Um, and so that really started for us uh, this questioning of, of how can we do things uh, better. And that was, that was at the tail end of the 2020 school year. So there were some other things going on uh, as well. Um, we had this awesome new building uh, and, and uh, a lot of momentum. And then we, we uh, you know, COVID came. And uh, so, so that was on the tail end of, of that year. Um, so that was something that was in our minds as we dealt with uh, connecting our kids to school through that, that difficult time. Um, and, and really what we, what started to drive us is a focus on uh, examining student agency at iTech specifically related to their experience um, with learning and, and with being part of our community. Um, we also wanted to explore how we can improve the experience for each one of our students, for that student that shared with the panel, for all of our, all of our um, kids and, and how we could, we could create a better experience for them. And that really evolved this year into um, how can we create a sense of belonging for all of our students. And have them feel connected to the community and feel that that they were valued and that they mattered. Um, and, and that led us to uh, uh, looking into that this year as one of our goals. Uh, and Panorama has been a huge piece 
uh, and an opportunity for us to get some uh, some baseline data from our entire student body. We're also, uh, which, which uh, uh, Anna and Brian will talk about, we're also running uh, student panels this year to get some, some data uh, from students and, and you know, across our, our building. But uh, Panorama really allowed us, it was a tool that allowed us to, to get at that why um, and, and start to, to work on creating a better experience for our students. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Hugo to talk about kind of how we implemented um, this plan. Thank you, Mr. Mead. Uh, so when you go on the Panorama on the website, um, when we first got it, it has a ton of data, a ton of good data. So when I looked at this, I, and I looked at this with Anna, we kind of looked at it as, okay, how do we look at it as a whole? How do we look at it as helping our whole community? And I'll reemphasize that word throughout um, my presentation here of just um, building community more than anything else. And Panorama does that, does that, and it's creating that sense of coming together. And so we first presented the data to our staff-led equity team. Um, from there, then we presented it to the student-led equity team. So we wanted to show the data so that once again, teachers and students are working together on this. Um, we then presented our findings to the staff. Um, from that staff, we broke them into uh, different groups within the Panorama group panorama groups, which are supportive relationships, positive feelings, self-efficacy, social awareness, challenging feelings, sense of belonging, and diversity and inclusion. So once we broke them up into different staff members or different groups, we had them come up with an action, action plan. And we just kind of copied and pasted because within panorama, they have playbooks. And so we had them look at the playbooks and said what best fits their teaching style and can also help the students in the best way. Um, we didn't wanna take away too much from our teachers. So from there, the, the next step, and Anna and a few here will go over our meeting, we created Smarty Goals, something that I learned from my time when uh, I was in grad school, which are strategic, measurable, ambitious, realistic, time-bound, inclusive, and equitable goal. All, all these um, tie into just our equity work and our equity lens. Uh, they are dynamic areas for change that we as a school can focus on to make sure every student is getting what they need. So next slide, and I'm gonna dive a little bit harder into our SMARTY goals here. So right here you can see, um, and we won't click on them and get too much into details. If you wanna go into our data, great, um, and look further on. But uh, we had our student feedback first to show us what kind of what we can work on and what they see they saw with the panorama data. And then we had them create a SMARTY goal of their own um, to see what they want to change within our school. And then we had our staff come up with each individual SMARTY, SMARTY goal themselves from those different categories of supportive relationships, positive feelings, et cetera. And what this does overall is we see what works best. And then when I come back to this, when we go to retake this, we could see what we improved on and what we didn't and what works and what doesn't work and what we really want to implement more in our school. And now I will hand it over to Anna that kind of goes over our first meeting and how, um, what we did. Anna, um, I think you're still muted. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. We're okay, so momentum going there too. So we wanted to, yeah. Um, in their focus area teams, staff explored the ISET, which is our student-led equity team. Um, so they examined ISET feedback, and then our staff-led teams feedback. And so we had them, or we asked them to conduct a deep dive into the data answering three, these three questions. What do you notice? What other questions do you have? And what strategies could we use? And again, um, Brian mentioned the strategies in the playbook. And so either they were going to find a strategy that worked for them and, and their um, skill set as a teacher, or maybe come in with some that they have found useful in their classrooms. Next slide, please. So um, this is an example of what panorama looks like. So this uh, panorama gives us a baseline of where we are as a school within our district and also where we fall at, um, when we're compared to other schools and other districts with similar um, demographics within panorama's data set. 
Next slide, please. So these, this is an example of displaying three panoramic questions and their percentages of students answering favorably. All three reveal areas of potential growth and opportunities for SEL student support. Um, and it's really important that we, um, we tie these together so then we can work together as a school to make sure that each student is getting what they need. So take a moment, um, uh, read these, and um, if you have any questions, we'll have a moment to go over them. So again, this is just an example of one of the focus areas. Anna, I'm curious, um, and yes. Brian as well, when you shared this kind of data with students, what were some of the reactions that they had? Um, can you share some of the insight that the students gave about this? Sure. Um, so I uh, was leading that, uh, that meeting, and students were really well, they were both surprised and not surprised, if that makes any sense. So <laughs> they, were, they were shocked that um, some of the, you know, the social emotional um, data that they're seeing from their schoolmates were oftentimes so low. And so they were really, they were really shocked and concerned. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing as Anna, that they were just, they were more co concerned about um, each other and others um, more than anything else, especially with our um, ISET team. Um, because that's that's their whole goal is to for equity and how they can help. And this one is just one of the examples that we um, Brian and I compiled um, just to quickly kind of give the the questions that were to us the most um, poignant and had the most um, responses and and we could work on to change. And so like the bottom one here, how confident are you that you will remember? What you learned in your current classes next year and 28 percent of the students that took the test responded favorably that one was a shocker for me i was like whoa so the, it is it's shocking to see just as a you know as a prior teacher and then in the role i am now i i knew you know the the, the pandemic obviously weighs a lot right. on this but it it was shocking right it's, it would be so interesting to know if they felt that way prior to the pandemic. It's, it'll be interesting to see as we go along how the data changes as kids are in school in a more regular way. But that one is just, I, I'm astounded, especially, quite frankly, especially at a school like iTech where the learning is so hands-on. And so, you know, it's all based on research about how kids learn. So it's just, wow. So I, I don't have any insight into that. I just, that's just my response. Just, wow. Next slide, please. So this is, um, again, an example of the outcomes that came from both the students and the staff feedback. So this was at meeting number two, we presented this slide. And um, it really is a synthesis of both student and staff feedback data as voice. And we created these slides for each one of those focus areas. And again, it's just kind of highlighting um, those moments um, where a staff is noticing something or where a student is saying something. And so we focused on three um, questions and you will see them if we, um, actually, I'll just quickly explain it. Um, so you have, what are the survey take, takers telling us? What might that mean that they're asking us to do? And then again, how might we respond? And the how might we respond are those strategies that teachers suggest and that um, Panorama also suggested um, that have been vetted to help uh, um, to help change things. Next slide. And my final slide is um, staff meeting number two. And you saw that the, the slides that we were working with, so they, they used those slides with those 
feedbacks that Brian, our feedback that Brian and I thought were most, you know, just really poignant. And then um, they went back into their data. And then I have an example here, and I won't go into it, but it's an example of what you know their feedback looked like. And um, so, building on their feedback, and specifically uh, that feedback from both student and staff, they examined data to create action plans based on those three questions. What practice will we try? Who is going to lead the work? And when will we implement these strategies? So um, Mr. Hugo will now tell us more about the outcome. Oh yeah, good, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Ricks. So uh, once again, the school-wide, the, the community here, a school-wide SMARTY goal based on student and staff input of what can we do to uh, just better our community more than anything else and better ITAC. Um, and so just our focus area and our action plans of just keeping um, this data and seeing, as I said earlier, what works, what doesn't work when we go to, go to reassess again. And um, Mr. Mr. Mead's gonna go a little bit into uh, some more details here before I lead us off and um, ask if we have any more questions. Thank you, Mr. Hugo. And yeah, just coming back to kind of the, the big picture um, and, and this process we use to, to help improve student experience, but the big picture of really what we wanna get at is what experience are students having at iTech? Do they feel a sense of belonging and, and like they're part of the community? Um, and in order to do that, you know, we thought it was crucial. Uh, the panorama data gives us a great um, kind of high level uh, um, picture of, of where our students are at. And there were some areas, Kathy, like you said, that, that we were like, wow, like when I was first looking at this. Um, and, you know, it's shocking initially. And then it, it, what it really does is gives us some guidance on, on where um, we need to put our efforts. And in order to, to make a, a change or an impact, really what, what we decided um, as a group is that we needed to get feedback from all uh, stakeholders, that we needed to get that, that high level Pandora or panorama data, that we needed to um, have student panels, uh, that we needed to tap into our ISED or, or our uh, student equity team um, and, and really get feedback and experience from all stakeholders. Our next step is we're going to, we're going to start meeting with uh, parent focus groups to see what their experience is with students and, and uh, really get a, a picture of, of where we need to go and, and get multiple perspectives uh, and feedback on our goals, uh, like Mr. Hugo talked about. Um, and then uh, he'll, he'll talk about kind of what we're we're doing now, but we're gonna we're gonna implement all of these these strategies and and uh, you know with feedback from students from staff and and students are also going to uh, work on one of our smarty goals is is uh, looking at identity based bullying uh, that was one of the things that the kids came up with and the kids are going to develop curriculum that they're going to go into teaching classes to educate people around that um, so a, a lot of strategies that have come out of this discussion and this work uh, and then um, we're going to be able to assess ourselves again. Uh, here coming up uh, to see what growth we've had. So if you go to the next slide, I'll turn it over to Mr. Hugo to talk about uh, the next, um, the next uh, assessment that we're gonna do. So as uh, you guys already know, we're reevaluating this and retaking it again. And that's what I think I like most about this panorama data is it's not just indie. Um, it's coming around and it's bringing it full circle. Um, that means that it not only, it, we always ask ourselves the, you know, we're always seeing how we can hold kids accountable. This is holding ourselves accountable. This is showing us and showing our accountability of are we making change or not? Are we going in the right direction or not? And so that, that's where I'm looking forward to this panorama data and this next go around um, and then rehashing it out. It may not all work, that's okay. We gotta find the strategies that do work and go with them. So, and that's all from our team. And so um, thank you, Ms. Ricks. Thank you, Mr. Mead. And thank you for everybody for listening. I. I appreciate it. And if there's any questions, feel free to ask any of us. Now I want to jump in and add one thing too, Mr. Hugo. One of the, we have in all the classrooms at ITEC, the acronym FAIL, First Attempt in Learning. And we have learned a lot in this process. And, uh, you know, we had in, in full disclosure, we had about 66% responses uh, the first time that we went through this. And, you know, we have learned some things to, to help increase that. And we're shooting for hundred percent on the next one, but this is just, you know, it's a process like Mr. Hugo said that we're gonna we're gonna try some things and, and we're gonna continue to get feedback from our community and from all stakeholders 
um, to make sure that we're we're hitting the mark. And, and it really is, it's, it's like a project that we give the kids. We have a, a problem that we need to solve and we're gonna we're gonna put our effort towards it and, and keep adjusting as needed to, to uh, create a great experience for our kids. So questions. Um, I just want to comment on how um, this just seems to reflect how important it is to actually have this data because honestly, I feel like we would have expected, like we said, like a number of it's like those numbers were shocking. Like you would have assumed like, oh, they're especially you know, children that have chosen to go to iTech and it's, you know, they're learning in the way that research says they learn best. If we had to assess like without any of the data, without Panorama, we would say, oh, they're they're all doing well, they're all feeling involved, they're, you know, they're they're all doing all these hands-on learning activities. And yet come to find out that's not the case. So it's so important that we have something like Panorama so we can really get at what the kids need and how they're feeling and then develop those strategies. Because just from observation, we'd say, sure, these kids are all feeling like they've got that you know, efficacy and that they're doing really well. So I appreciate seeing that because that is, like I said, shocking. Kathy, one thing you said, uh, talked about earlier of just like um, more testing. I looked at Panorama the same way um, earlier, but one of our teachers, uh, Greg Joy, he's been in the district a long time, amazing, amazing guy. He took Panorama in a totally different direction that I didn't even, even think about. He sat down and he went through every question. So all the kids understood the question and then they answered it themselves. And so it didn't feel like a test for them. Um, and so once again, that was just an idea of our teacher that just made it more engaging and, and more not like more stress for them. Um, and so just just an idea of, of the important, not only the ports of this data, but how we can get it out there and in, um, in the best way possible for our kids. Um, sorry to revert back to that, but I just, it clicked in my head when you said something about that. I have one question, and I saw that in the presentation there was data available that we can dig into. I'm curious, though, what the high-level trends were between middle school and high school. If you notice any differences in the data, the student experience, um, kind of what your takeaways from that is. And then also, if the same Smarties goals can apply for the whole school, or did you kind of um, distinguish, distinguish between the two groups of students? So I can answer that, and um, at least for the first portion, um, and it's the teacher in me is just like, oh, let me show you Panorama. Let me just open it up and show you. And um, so there's a portion uh, that where you can click uh, one of the toggles on the top where it goes to comparison. And it will give you comparison through um, various different things like uh, gender, um, race, um, ability, um, ableness. And so in our school at iTech, we noticed that students were coming in at sixth grade being very hopeful and feeling awesome and like, yes, I can do it. And then there was a drop off in seventh and eighth which then continued to drop off as like the high schoolers um, were, I guess, taking more college classes. Maybe that's our thought, we didn't know. That was just our wondering was like, is it because maybe they don't feel part of the community as much because they're now out in, um, you know, in different schools taking college classes. So there was a difference in grade level and there was a difference in gender as well. And so it was, it was very, interesting and again, shocking. Thank you. And, and Kyle, what it really allows us to do is have these discussions, right? We can ask, well, I wonder why this happened. Mm -hmm. I wonder, and, and because we're able to, to share it and connect with staff and students, it gives us some great opportunities um, to, to ask those questions and, and to really dig into it. Um, and so it's been, it's, you know, and, and we're, like I said, we're on the the very early end of even understanding how to use this um, because there's so much, there's so many questions and so many levels that you can dig into that um, it's, it's, it's been amazing so far and I think it will continue to be 
as we um, as we're able to to get a second round of the data and, and just create discussions around uh, a lot of these questions. Thank you very much. That was what I was looking for. Um, as most people know, I, I love seeing data, but then also how the data is applied. So this, I, I, I love kind of the structure you've created here. Um, but it is interesting because iTech is one of our few buildings that's six through 12. And just to be able to break down and see what those trends are across grade level um, and how that affects student experience. Anyways, thank you. That's all for me. And, and the second part of your question of, can we apply the same uh, SMARTY goals to all of the school? Um, I think so, but we'll let you know uh, as, as we're talking with our ISET team and, and going through this process because we'll be able to evaluate, did that work? Do we need to go a different direction um, and, and continue to look at that? No, thank you very much. So one of the reasons we asked iTech um, to share today is the way they included students into the loop. Um, so you may have noticed that there are multiple points that um, students were involved in the process. And then also one of the cool things about these kinds of structures and tools is that it usually spins to other opportunities. So you may have noticed they said student-led panels is something that they're thinking about. And so um, also one of the slides talked about comparison um, to the, the national norm and where we stand up. And then we'll also have opportunities to compare like how are kids thinking about these questions at other schools in our district. And um, especially through um, Anna and the equity coaches who are serving multiple buildings, there's an opportunity to network and collaborate there um, as, as we see trends. And then as you have done site visits with Mr. Ullman and um, Mr. Gray and Ms. Lindholm, um, you're seeing that they can be that, that networking component too. So what's going on at iTech? Hey, have you thought about this? Um, they're, they're exploring student-led panels and you might wanna talk to them about that. So um, during the pandemic, it did make it pretty hard to collaborate and we're starting to feel like we're coming out of that a little bit. Um, and so I think the, the potential here is huge. Um, it, it also, um, as we've been throwing a lot of content at you the last, uh, <laughs> two and a half months, uh, it's how do we narrow that focus? And we talked about that in our district leadership team today. Uh, like we, we don't wanna be so um, wide and thin that we're not making an impact. We, we wanna leverage these tools. And um, as, as Brian talked about, like really assessing what works and then um, investing in that. So if there aren't any other questions for the team, uh, we'll release them and really appreciate iTech for being on here and Teresa and Darcy for giving us the district level view. And then you can anticipate in June, um, hopefully June will have that district level data again and um, might be being able to, even if we can't get iTech back for a full presentation, um, maybe a slide or so that kind of like closes the loop for you all as board directors too, as this is a learning that they had and, and maybe we can feature another school at the next meeting too. So um, any other questions for them? No, but I am looking forward to seeing like what happens because now you've got my brain all Wand wondering about all sorts of things like the gender and the sixth grade and the so I'll be excited to see what you guys come up with how it all works thanks so much I just and also wanted wanted to, oh. go ahead Sandra sorry I, I just love hearing this because it really also gives purpose to the students feelings and how um giving them more tangible um because I guess this top I feel like as board directors, we talk about wanting our students to feel like they belong and wanting to hear what they have to, to say, but then also knowing that what they have to say has value and how we're changing that. And I, so I love hearing that there is um, purpose to what they're saying and um, guidance after that. Thank you, Sandra. Yeah. One of the um, other things that you, you all know Clark because he presented at the last board meeting from iTech and he's on the student advisory team. Um, and so one of the first activities that that district level student advisory will do is to look at district level data similar to how iTech is looking at their school data and to help us plan some activities for the fall 
um, at a district level, what can we do to help students and families feel more welcome based on this data? And so you're seeing um, alignment across the system, hopefully from the individual level up to you as a board um, with you know, the purchase of this and the focus um, that you've given us. So um, you should feel good about the impact that, that you're having. Um, so thanks again, iTech team for joining us this evening. Um, and with that, Director Barros, if you're okay, I'll move us to the next part of the agenda and um, uh, invite Brett uh, to walk us through. And Brett, I will pull up the, um, the agenda so that we can walk through the contracts as you highlight them. And as usual, if, if board directors have questions, um, sometimes we're able to answer those questions right here. But the purpose of this is to prepare for the April meeting. And so um, we wanna make sure that you know what's on the April agenda, what we're recommending for approval and purchase and all those things. So I um, appreciate your time with this and Brett, um, it is all you as soon as I get this up. All right, thank you, Dr. Snell. Um, so yeah, so the uh, first item on from our agenda is a recommendation to award bid number 2022-008. It is a much anticipated parking lot addition at Harney Elementary. I think um, several of us can um, particularly celebrate this one. Uh, we'll triple over triple the size of the parking lot or the number of spaces as well as be able to improve the student drop off. Um, flow significantly um, with these enhancements. Uh, we were lucky to receive five bids, which um, is always nice to know that we've got uh, some competition out there. Uh, we ultimately are recommending the bid be awarded to Western United Civil Group um, in the amount of $697,800 plus Washington State sales tax. Uh, this will be funded by Capital Projects Fund or um, commonly known as the Bond Fund. So questions on uh, unjamming the chaos that occurs at drop off time and pick up time at Harney. I just have one question. I assume this will be completed over the summer. Correct. Yes. All right, if there's no other questions on that one, we'll move on to another capital project or bond fund recommendation. This one is bid number 2022-005. Uh, it is roof work, a uh, replacement of the main roof in the gym at uh, Fruit Valley Elementary School. Um, the recommended awardee is Rooftoppers Incorporated, and the amount would be $636,426 plus Washington State sales tax. Questions on updating the roof or rep uh, repairing and replacing roof at Fruit Valley? All right, we'll move on to another capital projects funded um, investment for Vita and specifically the kitchen equipment. It is a bid number 2022-006. Um, we are recommending that we award that to Douglas Equipment in the amount of $190,551.34 plus Washington State sales tax. Questions on equipping the kitchen at Vita. I have one quick question that's very specific, and if it needs to come up and follow up, that's fine. But I'm curious if this is just the primary kitchen for the cafeteria space, or if it also includes there's that secondary eating space. Like, is this just for like the nutrition services kitchen? Yeah, I'll have to double check what that secondary space entails and whether it's included here. I mean, certainly it's it's the primarily the the main kitchen, mm -hmm. but whether it includes those other spaces that you're rec uh, alluding to, I'll have to follow up on. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, moving on to our recommendation to approve agreement number, purchase agreement uh, number 2022-001. It's a contract for a outside firm to perform respirator fit testing. Uh, this relates to the N95 masks or respirators. They have to be professionally fit tested. Um, we still have a number of positions that are deemed to be higher risk with due to close proximity and personal care um, nature of certain assignments within our district. 
Um, Labor and Industry, Department of Labor and Industry still calls for N95s in those cases. Um, so this allows us to bring in uh, 360 Safety Solutions LLC is the recommended vendor. And the amount is going to fluctuate based on a couple different things. Number one, the number of folks in those assignments and possibly shifting guidance. But right now our estimate for that uh, contract would be $49,050, um, again, to be awarded to 360 Safety Solutions. And again, that would be funded by the general fund if I failed to mention that. So um, that's the fit testing, but that's not the actual mask, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yep. And then they would be using, just to make sure that the mask that they are using fit correctly. Correct, okay. yes. Oh, and then there's a medical questionnaire process to make sure that there's adequate airflow and everything else for the particular individual's medical needs potentially. All right, well then we'll move on to um, a, a recommendation to approve a purchasing agreement number 2022-012 uh, with Camas School District. This is one of those kind of piggyback, commonly known as piggyback arrangements where Camas is asking to buy off of some of our competitively bid contracts. Um, I would say we probably owe Camas a little bit lately. Um, so <laughs> I would strongly recommend that we uh, we trade them our bid pro um, bid agreements for some other uh, benefits that we've reaped from them lately. Any questions on allowing Camus to use our bid documents? All right, no cost on that one, so there's no funding source, um, just an interlocal. And then lastly, we have four different um, completed projects that as you've heard for the last several months, we have to formally ask you to accept their completed um, status and begin the process of closing out the project with some several state agencies, um, ultimately resulting in retainage being uh, released to the contractor. All of them are capital projects funded or bond funds. Um, so I'll go through them pretty quick and then we can ask, oh, I'll, I'll offer the opportunity for any questions at the end. Uh, the first one is bid number 2020-057 for Hazeldell Elementary uh, Secure Entrance and FCRC um, space at Hazeldell again, uh, inline, Commercial con construction, excuse me, was awarded that bid and has successfully completed the contract to our satisfaction. The final amount was $150,965.72. The next one has many similarities in that it was for also for um, secure entrance and FCRC space. Uh, this one was for Roosevelt Elementary. It was originally bid under bid number 2020-076. It was also awarded to inline commercial construction. The amount of the Roosevelt contract uh, final amount was $130,253.23 plus Washington State sales tax. The next one was a purchase agreement number 2021-034 for the purchase and installation of the bleachers at Kiggins Bowl. Uh, again, all of these are capital projects are bond funded. This particular purchase agreement was awarded to NORPAC seating through a KCDA cooperative bid. The final amount of that uh, work was $489,717.09 plus Washington State sales tax. And then our last completed project that we recommend you accept is purchase agreement number 2021-073 for carpet at Lincoln and Harney Elementary Schools. Uh, as with most of our carpet work, Bearsford Company was the successful bidder or uh, most competitive quotes through the KCDA cooperative program. The final amount for those two schools, carpet was $306,410.04 plus Washington State sales tax. So I ran through those last four quickly. Is there any questions on those?
All right, thank you. So we'll loop back on the kitchen one. Um, and then if there are any other questions that board directors have in their review, um, just let us know uh, and we can prepare you for the April meeting. Um, we don't have any policies scheduled for um, the April meeting, and we do have um, some instructional materials. Um, these, if you look through these, I, I think um, they're probably not anything that's too controversial in this one. It's mostly uh, children's literature. Um, and just as a reminder, the instructional materials committee um, reviews these um, prior to them coming to you. Um, and so if you have any questions about those, we're happy to follow up um, on specific titles or process. Um, so that's uh, it, I think, Director Barrows. All right. Thank you all for the information, the presentations, and uh, reviewing our contracts for our next board meeting. With that, unless there's further questions, we are adjourned. It is 626. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.